Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking The Real Housewives of New York, season 13, episode one. So the New York girls are back. And you know what? I kind of liked this episode. It didn't give a whole lot, but it was decent. I will have to say that I did miss Dorinda. I really did. I missed Dorinda and we'll just have to see how the rest of the season pans out. Anyway, let's get on to the show. So the episode starts off with us finding out that Leah has decided to convert to Judaism. She's really nervous about it. She says that during COVID, she got a very big calling um, to convert to Judaism. So she's talking to her sister about it. She's letting her sister know that it's a very big decision and she's been thinking about this a lot. She wants to look into it a little more before she makes her final decision. Somehow, I don't know if this is gonna be easy for Leah. I really don't. I wanna ask you for your forgiveness for really just not being a great daughter. And I am sorry, so do you forgive me? Well, we'll see about that. Um, I don't understand Leah and her parents' dynamic. It is very odd to me. I don't know, you know, if my son asks for forgiveness for me, of course I'm gonna accept his apology. Her parents, they are different types of parents. Let me just tell you, I don't understand their relationship. So is it me or does it seem as if every season Luann is moving or every season she's buying a new place? The only place that she has held on to was her place in the Hamptons. Luann is always doing the most every season she is moving somewhere. So it seems that Luann and Ramona have become besties. They have a bond now. They are hanging out. They're getting along very well. And this is new. And I have no idea if they have said, well, you know, Leah and Ebony are close because Leah and Ebony have gotten really close. We're gonna have to do something. We're gonna have to team up. You know, I don't know. It just seems to me that Luann and Ramona have a strategy. So Luann lets us know that she has decided to stop drinking again and that she has picked out this non-alcoholic rosé. And I'm telling you, that non-alcoholic rosé looked kind of good. I wish I would have been able to see the name on the label because I would give it a try. I have tasted a few, maybe three or four different brands of rosé. And so far, I'm not a fan. I don't, I don't like it that much. I think that at this point, I'm allergic to alcohol because at the summer, I had a couple times where I didn't remember how I got home. Listen, honey, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, you are not allergic to alcohol. You just indulge way too much. You get blackout drunk. You are not allergic to alcohol. You've been drinking way too long to be allergic. If you were allergic, you would have found out years ago. Girl, allergic. Anyway, I'm really proud of Luann for deciding that she would like to stay sober. I'm wishing Luann the very best. However, Somehow I have the feeling that Luann is not going to make it to the end of the season without drinking something. So they talk a little bit and it turns out that Sonia has not been returning any of Luann or Ramona's calls. Luann says that she ran into Sonia's daughter and her daughter said that Sonia really wasn't keeping up with her as well. And I said, well, Sonia must be going through something if she's not even keeping up with her daughter. The thing is, is Instead of just calling and texting her, if you were really truly concerned, why didn't anyone just go to her house and knock on the door? You know, if I haven't heard from my friends and family in a while, if I'm texting and calling and I don't get a response, I'm gonna go check on you because I don't know, anything could be wrong. I'm just saying. I look and I go, oh my. No, <laughs> no, that's no. All right now, peeps, now here's the deal. Do you really believe that she didn't know that Tom lived right there? She was married to Tom and she lived in that place before. So you should know the building surrounding Tom's apartment. Eh, I'm riding 50-50 on this, but somehow I'm teeter 
potter it a little bit too. You knew exactly where Tom lived and you wanted him to see you. Leah meets up with the new housewife, Ebony, and I have to say that I'm liking her already. I saw her on Wendy Williams a couple of days ago and I knew that I was gonna like her. Um, her and Leah have a little conversation. It wasn't giving much. They were talking about their dating life and how she just got out of a relationship, which she went over all that on Wendy Williams, how she had been dating this guy for three years. He's got three kids. When COVID happened, he stayed in New Jersey with his children. He did not quarantine with her. And with her not having him with her, them not seeing each other throughout the quarantine, they learned a little more about each other and decided that it just wasn't gonna work. The best thing is for her to just move on. Sonia is back at the townhouse. With Sonia, it's the same thing every other season. Well, she's not at the townhouse, she's at her apartment. She's back at the townhouse, she's at her apartment. She's back at the townhouse. Okay, well now, honey, she's back at the townhouse. She says that when COVID hits and everything went crazy in the world, she couldn't afford to keep her townhouse and the apartment. And since nobody was renting the townhouse, she decided to come back. It is what it is. If you don't have the money to live in the apartment and pay for the townhouse, you gotta choose one. And that's what Sonya did. Then it was a little awkward for me, just a little cringeworthy. Leah called Sonya on FaceTime and both of them just happened to be in the bathtub. And no, I don't take calls in the bathtub. I, I don't, you know, what? I don't take calls in the bathroom. It's just weird to me. You know, have you ever been on the phone with somebody and you hear the toilet flush? I just think it's kind of gross and just not, it's not my thing. I have actually been at work and gone to the restroom and heard somebody else in the other stall next to me holding a full conversation on their cell phone. And I think to myself, what kind of disgusting is this? I'm just saying, I mean, is something wrong with me? I don't know. When Leah calls Sonia, she asks her if she can invite Ebony to her party. And Sonia says, well, sure, go ahead and I'll let the rest of the girls know that you're bringing her. My thing is, uh, production doesn't have to set this up for us. There's no way that the rest of the girls did not know that Ebony was coming to this lunch. Uh, you know, come on now, stop messing with us. We've been watching this for 13 years. I mean, seriously. I wear many hats professionally. I am a lawyer by trade, but I also work as a broadcaster. I also just launched a podcast called Holding Court with Ebony K. Williams. Honey, listen, I already love her. I love this girl. She is real cool. She's real regular. And she just seems like you know, a relaxed, laid back person who is an absolute go-getter. And I just like her, I really do. She talked a little bit with her friend about when she first became a lawyer, she got a job at a law firm. Then she realized that she really didn't like that. So she became a public defender and she absolutely loved that. But then she decided that she wanted to reach higher. So she has gone into other roles in her life. She also mentioned how she wasn't really taking very good care of her financial credits. And at one point she wanted to purchase a home, but the bank said, even though you have money, your credit is terrible and no ma'am. Even your mama wouldn't loan you the money for this house. So girl, forget it, no. She has says that since then she has buckled down. She took a year and a half to just focus on nothing but her credit. And now she has excellent A1 credit and she'd like to buy a brownstone in Harlem. My thing is, listen to honey girl, if you can buy a beautiful brownstone in Harlem, High five to you. You have done it as far as I'm concerned. Hats off to Ebony. Looks amazing. Yeah, and I never take the tags off anything in case I don't keep it. Now see here, no, I am not shocked or surprised. How many seasons have we seen Sonya leave the tags on something? I am telling you, I've always known that Sonya is wearing these clothes and returning them. I mean, okay, Sonya. I just hope you know, they behave themselves, but... I mean, I feel like, do you think they've met anyone like me before? A like black that person? person? No, like, because <laughs> actually, no, I don't think they have. A black person. You know, this is going to be interesting. It really is. I shouldn't even be talking about them generally. It's just like more like Ramona. Like she's done a lot of messed up stuff with me. She um, I just thought it was weird that Leo was saying that she should have possibly warned, you know, Ramona. I'm not gonna spend my time worried about Ramona. I'm really not. And if I was Leah, there's no way I'm gonna sit back and be on pins and needles thinking about Ramona. You can handle Ramona, no problem. You know what I mean? It's, she's no problem. No, 
I'm sorry. And I'm definitely not worried about Ebony having any problems dealing with Ramona. I have a feeling that with just a few words, Ebony is going to be able to level Ramona. It's going to be a big difference this season, I can tell you. need any help, Sonia? Uh, this is like a specialized thing I'm doing. It's funky stone. You have to get the dirt off the top. Is this for real right now? Like, <laughs> no. If you notice, yeah. my fish are every color. I have black, white, you know yellow. You <laughs> I feel Sonia's trying to connect on the racial diversity element of the moment. But I think the fish effort is a, is a bit lame. I don't understand what's happening. I really don't. That was odd, even for Sonia. You know, I don't know why this man is brought up every time. Why do we always have to talk about Harry Dubin? Who cares? It seems to me that every one of the girls have decided that they'd like to have their turn on the Dubin Ferris wheel. All right, everybody just go on and kiss and hug up old Harry Dubin and move on. Stop bringing this up, Sonia. You know, I did feel sorry for Sonia when I found out that Century 21 was going bankrupt. She worked so hard to get her clothing line inside of Century 21. And I have seen a few months back, maybe four or five months back, that her clothing line is now being sold at walmart.com. And some people might laugh and think that's a big joke, but you know what, Walmart is huge. Walmart was way bigger than Century 21. And even though the price points probably won't be able to be anywhere near the same price points that you had at Century 21. You have a lot more exposure and more people shop at Walmart than Century 21. So take what you can get and be happy with that and keep on trying to build. You'll get there at some point, Sonia. Ebony does give her some free legal advice. Sonia says that she has not seen the books in this business and that she's 54% owner. And Ebony says, what do you mean? Ebony tells her, she says, ma'am, if you are 54% owner of this business, you absolutely need to see those books. It doesn't make sense. You know, I realize that Sonia is not some titan in the industry of business, but how ridiculous do you have to be to realize that you are 54% owner in a business and that, and you are entitled to see those books? Sonia, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. She she needs some true help. Luann lets everyone know about her new boyfriend, Garth, you know, from the Hamptons. And, you know, in real time, Garth and Luann are over. They have broken up. Garth has went on about his business. But during this filming time, Luann is absolutely out of control, crazy about this man. And you know what? If she's happy, I'm happy. She says she met him on a dating app and that she had manifested him. I said, well, I wish somebody would tell me how to manifest a man, okay? L listen. <laughs> I'm gonna move on. Uh-uh. Ebony goes on and says that she's recently started dating some guy and he used to be her friend, but all of a sudden he is no longer in the friend zone and that she thinks he's amazing and that he is a owner of a football team. Yeah, he's a minority owner of a football team. Well, I mean, he could maybe introduce me no. to some football so players. So I met him. No, you, no. I know, no. I know. You should be dating the guy that owns the team. Yeah. The you got to get go. away from the talent, Leah. <laughs> get to the boss. Okay, let's Set hater. your goals here, baby. All right. Lord have mercy. The woman has rules. And as you can see, Luann was right there with it. She said, uh-uh, you've got to level up. And you know what is funny? You would think that Ramona, Miss I am always social climbing, always looking for some Somebody with more money, more money, more money. You would think that Ramona would be Team Ebony, right? I don't know. Something tells me that Ramona and Ebony are going to go at it all season. Luann has a heart-to-heart -heart with Leah and asks Leah if she would be her sober buddy. Throughout this ride that they're about to go on for season 13, she lets her know that she is, you know, sober. She's trying to, you know, continue on with her sobriety. And Leah tells her, absolutely. She will absolutely be her sober partner. And I really like this. I really do. I think that if Leah continues on her sobriety, she will definitely be able to help Luann hold on to hers. And, you know, teamwork. I appreciate that. I love that. So Ramona and Luann speak to Sonia and they let her know that they haven't spoken to her from March through July. 
and they want to know what the heck is going on, where has she been, what's going on, why hasn't she returned any of their calls or text messages. She says that she doesn't like to bother them and, you know, she's got a lot going on with her life and she, you know, needed some time and she needed some space. Well, when they were on Watch What Happens Live last night, she says that she doesn't think that they really care about her like that anyway. She said she believes that they were trying to reach out to her from all that time because they just wanted to be in her business. She said that she believed that they just had FOMO. They wanted to know what she was doing and how she was doing it. And she just needed some space. Ramona invites all the girls to her house in the Hamptons and she lets Ebony know that she's invited as well. The fact that black people could own waterfront no, property major. not hardly a generation or so after slavery, I mean, that's remarkable. So Sack Harbor's a very special to me. Oh, right now. So Ebony dropped a little knowledge on these guys and I said, I bet Ramona was not happy about that at all because remember, Ramona is always making fun about the side of town in the Hamptons that Luann lives in. She always tries to make it seem like Luann lives in the slums of the Hamptons. Well, <laughs> oh, Ramona, this is going to be good this season. I can just tell. Anyway, this episode was pretty cool. I am looking forward to next week. I am looking forward to them spending time in the Hamptons, and we will see what happens. And until next time, bye.